kick things off for this project, I'm going to be using a white 48 by 24 inch pegboard. Now there are so many different pegboard sizes, colors, and materials available out there, so feel free to use whatever makes sense for your space since there's really no wrong option. Since this will more than likely end up on my wall, I'm going to be using some 1 by 2 inch boards cut down to size to create a frame around the back. Now to make this look more like an art piece and less like an old pegboard you'd find in your garage, I'm going to be using some more 1 by 2 inch boards that I bought white to create a frame around the border in the front. Looking back, there has to be a better way of doing this step, but it's all I could think of at the time. I'm gluing the front pieces of wood to the pegboard, and my plan is that once it dries, I'll be able to flip it over, and hopefully those front pieces will stay put long enough for me to secure everything together with some screws, starting from the back pieces of the 1x2s. After about 12 hours of drying, it was time for me to flip it over and reposition the back sections of wood. After getting everything lined up, I drilled small pilot holes and will be using 1 and 1 4 inch screws to secure everything together. The screws are going to be just long enough to go through the back pieces, the pegboard, and about halfway through the wood in the front. So I ended up going a little too deep on some of the pilot holes, so I'm going to clean that up with some spackling. And finally, after giving the dried spackling a light sand, I'm going to give the front 1x2s a fresh coat of white paint. At this point, you may also decide to paint the sides of the back pieces since they'll also be somewhat visible. Now it's time to move on to the LED portion of the build. In my last video I shared with you what I'm 100% convinced are the best aluminum diffuser channels that you can find on Amazon and I'll be incorporating those into this project. For getting everything wired up I'm going to be using some 18 gauge silicone wires. Cut three wires at about 12 inches in length for each. Next take a wire stripper and cut back a little bit of each strand. Next I'll be doing what's called tinning the wires. Put a little bit of solder on your iron and use that to heat up the wires underneath so that the solder melts into the wire. Do this for all three. Since we're going to be attaching these to the pads of the LED strips, we don't need as much exposed wire so cut it back to a smaller size. For the LED strips, I'm going to be using some BTF lighting WS2812B pixels that have 60 LEDs per meter. To fill up one section of the diffuser channel, I know I need 60 LEDs if I'm not going to put on any of the end caps, or 59 if I plan on using the end pieces. I personally like not having them on, so I'll be using 60. So once you have your strip cut, it's time to apply some solder to the pads of the LEDs. For this step, put the tip of the hot iron directly onto the pad and then quickly feed a little bit of the solder into that same pad. You should then have a little blob that sticks. The last thing is attaching the wires. All you have to do is put the wire on top of the solder that's on the pad and gently press down with the iron. Everything should fuse together and when you remove the heat, the solder will harden and it should now be attached to the pad. Now we can just do the exact same thing for the other side of the LED strip. So now that I have one completed, I won't show you, but I'm going to make five more that are identical to this one. To control the LED lights, I'm going to be using my usual WLED installed onto an ESP8266 module. I've had good luck using this method and it's about as cheap as you can get. Instead of using jumper wires, I'm going to cut three 6 inch long wires to solder onto the board. You can prep the three wires just like we did in the previous step.
on the ESP module, I'm going to melt a little bit of solder into the VIN, GND, and D4 pin to get them ready for the wires to be connected. Next, you can quickly tin the three wires. It does take a little bit of finesse to fuse the wire with the post, but it's not too difficult. This is where it definitely is nice to have the helping hands. Figuring out the best way to mount these to the pegboard took me much longer than it should have. I wanted everything to be able to get moved around with not much work in case I ever wanted to change up the design or layout. I decided to try super gluing these little magnets to the back of the mounting brackets of the diffuser channels. The idea was that these little magnets would fit into the hole and I would then have a little bit larger magnet behind the pegboard that would then keep the bracket in place. While waiting for the glue to dry, I'm going to start installing the strip lights into the diffuser channels. All of the LED strips have arrows pointing in one direction which is used to indicate the flow of the data line. I'm marking the beginning wires for each section so that when I'm connecting everything from behind, it's a little bit easier to tell what needs to go where. Now that the magnets have dried, I can begin to attach the brackets to the pegboard in any sort of configuration that I like. Now I just need to put the bigger magnet behind the pegboard directly under the bracket that has the smaller magnet attached. Next I can simply snap the channels in place. Here I'll be feeding the wires through the holes to get them out of the way. So this is a good lesson that not everything works out as you planned. It turns out that super glue does not create that strong of a bond between smooth metal surfaces and the small magnets could be snapped off the connector pieces with not too much effort. On the bright side, the magnet idea itself would have worked perfectly if I knew what type of adhesive to use that would create a stronger bond. If anyone has ideas, please let me know as I'm all ears. This time around, I'm going to be using the screws that the channels came with and I'll be cutting some small cubes of wood to use to connect it in the back. I'll also drill some small pilot holes in the wood to make the screws go in a little bit easier. To connect everything in the back, I'm going to be using some Wago connectors. I've really fallen in love with these because they're super easy to use, they work great, and I don't have to get all my soldering stuff out again. So this here are the end wires of the first section, and I'll be connecting them to the beginning wires of the section above. For this step, just make sure you're connecting the data to data, ground to ground, and voltage to voltage. Here I'll be connecting the end of the second channel to the beginning of the third. To get everything hooked up to the power and controller is super easy. Here you're looking at the three wires at the beginning of the first section. I'm going to take the connector and feed in the data wire from the controller and the data wire from the LED strip.
Next, I'm going to take the barrel plug adapter that came with the power source and insert one 6 inch long wire into both the positive and negative terminals. From here, I'm going to be using a 3 slot Wago connector and putting the voltage wires from the barrel plug, from the controller, and from the LED strip into it. Now maybe someone can help me out here. Is there any benefit to putting each wire into a separate slot like I'm doing here, or would there be no difference if I just put all the wires into one slot? I'll be doing the exact same thing now for all three ground wires. I'm going to quickly plug things in to make sure everything works. Now depending on how picky you are, you may want to hide the exposed wires. I found this great mesh cord organizer on Amazon that you can wrap around the wires and it's just barely thin enough so that you can still feed it through the holes on the pegboard. I might take the time to do the rest of them later, but for now I'm going to begin sliding on the diffusers. If you're going to hang this on the wall, you should be able to hide all the cables behind it. I'm going to drill a half circle in the back piece of wood near where my controller is so I can feed my power cord through it and still keep it flush with the wall. Now the other thing I did was I went back and put some heat shrink tubing on the pins of the LED controller to give them a little bit more protection. So that about wraps things up. Please let me know if you have any questions at all and I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos.